What would you say if I said that I was going to start a business here in Newfoundland selling solar panels? Maybe wind turbines would be better. Solar wind? panels, I wouldn't think. No. no? Go to the desert. Today is a beautiful day to talk about solar energy in Newfoundland. W Energy. Dan? Yeah. Hi, my name is my name is Pat Dunn. Right. I'm doing a little video about solar energy in Newfoundland, and uh, I thought that you'd be the man to talk to. So, this is our new house. It is a house that we purchased about a month ago. We we're literally still moving in. Now, if you have a look, I think that you can see that we have a pretty decent exposure for collecting sun rays. We had been thinking about the southern exposure and how it would work for solar. Between winter and summer, this is how the sun will track to the sky. You know, I wonder if I could just buy solar panels online, you know, Amazon. Is this something I could do myself? Hmm. Sounds cool. Imagine, no electricity bill in this day and age in Newfoundland. Dan is gonna tell me if I'm gonna be able to save on my electric bill by putting solar panels on my roof. How much will I save? How much will they generate? Are solar panels even feasible in Newfoundland? The navigation tells me that I need a charge when I arrive in Clareville. These are the problems that we have to overcome. These are the growing pains that we need to sort out. Uh, before everybody's gonna want to drive one of these things. Electrical wires everywhere. We have an uh, overabundance of electricity at our disposal. So, why not, eh? Why not? It's coming. We are arriving in Clarenville. As predicted, I have 33% battery. I will require a charge to get back home. Charge port open. Let's do this. Cool. There's like a huge trunk space down there where the gas tank is supposed to be. Hello. Are you in gas now? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. She's gonna go about 60 kilometers an hour. Wicked! <laughs> Let's not miss any of this stuff. You aren't used to coming out past overpass a lot sometimes, you know? It's no fair, you guys got sun out here. <laughs> we do, yeah. It's funny because I was just looking at some data and people from around the globe yeah. don't have the data that I have and that oh, we have. Because okay. we were the first to kind of deal with this stuff. We're similar to Germany uh, and Germany's got like 85, 90% of their whole country is done with you know, renewables and solar. The temperature here. The temperature here is great. It's a silicon based cell, so it's in the semiconductor industry. So yeah. it likes cool temperatures. It works better in cool temperatures. We bought a new house. Got the new house. Congrats, guys. It's built in the 40s. Yeah. It's got old windows, old storm windows. I'd love to have solar and be able to reduce my electrical bill or offset my electrical bill 100 yeah. percent power my house with heat pumps mm -hmm. and power my car exactly right yeah. is that is that possible yes. tightening up your windows and doors okay. putting in insulation in the attic okay. in the basement okay those are the simplest and most cost affordable things that most people should be doing okay. there's no question and newfoundland okay. power and Utility companies are telling people to do that. Any uh, tradesperson can do a lot of these retrofits quite easily. Yeah. The heat pumps are becoming a mature industry. Uh, and then we, we can look at potentially renewables. Okay. Uh, and it's all, and the only reason why people are even talking about it now, I hate to say it. Because yeah. of the, the fear of Muskrat Falls and how much it's going to cost per kilowatt hour. Yeah. So every homeowner That's feels... That's why I'm here. Exactly. So every homeowner feels that their monthly electrical bill is gonna go through the roof a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there, 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 there's some fear going on with that. So that's why people are looking at putting in heat pumps and you know energy efficiency to, to their buildings and so forth. So it's great that people are buying products that are more energy efficient, yeah. but at the end of the day, 
you know, how far do you go and how much money should you spend and where should you spend that money on? If somebody is interested in using solar PV, you know, how many of these are you gonna install? Well, you gotta look at your power bill, you gotta look at the building. So I got my energy bill to a point and I'm, you know, I'm energy efficient pretty much, and, uh, but I think I, I, I can do some more. And this is where this kind of technology can certainly play a role. Once we know the kilowatt hours of consumption of the building over a full year, yeah. then we can take that number yeah. and model it okay. uh, into our program. And then we can spit out a number that shows us how large of an array yeah. and how much energy that this thing should produce okay. so the customer can get their value. Uh, from their investment. We have them all wired outside yeah. of the building and of course it all comes in on a conduit and comes down through here mm -hmm. and goes into these uh, DC disconnects. So this is all DC? This is all DC high voltage. So there's two inverters so we did this from for a training purposes point of view so we can show them real-time information and what it all looks like and how much space it's going to take up. Right now our roof array is putting out 2120 or 30 um, watts of electricity. Um, this okay. this particular uh, one is on our wall array, and this was a test array that we did as well. But uh, this one's putting out uh, roughly uh, 750 watts at this particular time. Okay, cool. That gets gets sent back to some code compliance breakers and things, and then that would go into a main service entrance of a home or a commercial building and be installed. So this is the actual uh, breaker okay. for the solar. Um, so you get 60 amps. A 60 amp, right? Wow, That's sizable. Yeah, wow. and of course that is going to match your electric car charger yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah right that you're plugged into right now excellent wow so and then of course this one here is for the wind turbine the 30 amps for the wind turbine the sun was out a little brighter right now and yeah. if the wind was blowing a little stronger your car being charged would be zip oh wow because okay. you'd be producing enough yeah for that whole 60 amps you know to get out there right now we're not doing right, the whole right. 60 amps so, are we so right? so the 60 amps that can create 60 amps all of this on full full bore yeah wow yeah. so yeah, that so that's the reason why that's a you lot know, of when you look at you know the, the next phase of technology with uh with electrification i'll say mm -hmm. it's very viable uh, and cool. the efficiencies that's what makes it even more acceptable for people for techies and guys like ourselves yeah, yeah. that's what we like reading about and yeah, it's, yeah. it's an interest right but um, the nerds the geeks but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. total nerd with all this <laughs> stuff too but so yeah. 60 amps wow so this is uh this is what we wanted to do the south facing wall to see you know how much energy we could actually produce and not just model like that's five kilowatts so now people could say how much space do i need well that's five kilowatts okay what you see on that roof that's five so kilowatts. if someone is modeling something up and they say i want a 10 kilowatt array you're going to need twice as much, and that's what this building has. So, oh. can I buy a bunch of panels and put them on my roof? No. Is it that easy? Right. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> uh, if you don't have this uh, racking system, yeah. you can't put it on your roof. Basically. Okay. Uh, it's right all on. part of the code compliant process. So. You don't do the mechanical part of the electrical installation. Yeah. You can't get it approved at the end of the day by the electrical inspectors. Okay. okay. But people think sometimes they can live off grid for. You know, for uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, yeah, they can yeah. go to, uh, to a department store somewhere and buy a, uh, a couple of solar panels and a little battery, and that's it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's not more. A lot more to it than that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So we got people with lodges that got a hundred thousand dollars stand. You know, but they're living off grid. Yeah. You know, we got grid and comfortable. And comfortable. Yeah. And very comfortable. Same as living at home. When I get up in the morning, this you know I look out the window the first thing, and you know, and and I and I know how much energy is in the weather already. As soon as I look out the window, I say, yeah, I know what, I know how much energy my system is roughly going to produce. Fifteen kilowatt hours. Yeah. Right. Fifteen kilowatt hours. Now I got to pay that. Yeah. You know how much that's going to cost me? Two bucks. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> Two bucks to get back to town. <laughs> He's a real car salesman because I could be have one of these things real soon. We got 126 kilometers added. Pull that out. So where's your vehicle? Where's your, yeah. There's hardly any scratches on it. So I'm gonna let you drive. That's fantastic, I'd love to drive. Okay, let's do this. No shifting, no oh, gears. Nice. So quiet, hey? Isn't that peaceful? Isn't it? It's like effortless.
when the light turns green, you are going like sp the speed limit within like a second. Yeah, an FZ 1000 motorcycle. Okay. So this is what it reminds me of. Oh, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> it goes like the bullet. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't ever. You know, a lot of Newfoundlanders think that they can do this on their own by, well, yeah, I can do a wire, I can put it in a receptacle, I can do it. They're not allowed, yeah. but they tend But they do that. But they do that. Sometimes. So they tend to think about solar in the same context. They think that it's simple. Yeah. Generally speaking, no, they can't, and they're not allowed to. And they <laughs> and, can burn their house and down. And they can burn their house down. Yeah. So, you know, it, it has to be code compliant. Uh, it has to be designed according to the loads in the home. And of course, how much money the customer wants to spend. So, you know, I, I don't want to discourage people from thinking about this technology, but I certainly want to give them the right information, yeah. uh, you know, so they don't waste their time, uh, you know. Or burn their house down. Or burn their house down, yeah. So, <laughs> say that again. I don't yeah. like saying that because, because but it is serious I'll stuff. say it. It's, yeah. ser it's serious stuff. And yeah, it, no, I was it, thinking about doing yeah. it myself, too. Yeah. yeah, because there's guys out there you know, that attempt, attempted this stuff, and then they realized after they got thousands of dollars spent that, oh, my. Now, all of a they, sudden, I'm a liability. Well, Didn't just, I see you in my shop about a year ago? <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Piece wow. of cake. We didn't crash, and uh, we're still good. <laughs> still good. No scratches. You're, you're crazy. So if you're building a new home, build it net zero. Get the panels, do the whole thing. Put it right in your mortgage. If you're not building new, is it possible to do a retrofit so that you can prepare your house to be net zero ready? That is the next question we need to find out. Did you see the size of the cables? Like, I don't want to burn down my house. Got any questions? Ask them in the comments. I will try to find out for you. And we will include them in another video. Thank you so much for watching. This is a lot of fun. Let's do it again. Join me.